Hi everyone, welcome to the Roots of Money on episode 7. Today we are talking about properties, how to buy your first property and how to lease out your property or rent out your property. So that's what we are looking at today. I'm excited. I hope you are as well. I know a lot of people want to buy properties either for business investments or for, you know, personal use as a home. So we're going to look at all of that. So let's dive in. First of all, let's start with the factors that you need to look at or things that you need to look at for you to buy a property. Number one, it is location. A location is important. Is it close to things? Is it close to the school? Is it close to the malls? Is it close to, you know, facilities that you might need? Is it in a busy place? You know, what's happening in that area? Number two, crime rate. Oh, this one is the most important one because it devalues the place. Crime rate is very, very important to take care of. How do you do that? You do your own research. You go about that area. You go around and ask people, how's the crime rate? You also observe remember guys buying a house is not a, a, a quick thing it's not like you're gonna wake up today and then start buying a house you probably need a month research you need three months research maybe you need even a six months research of everything it's up to you yes you can do a week's research but a thorough research or a longer researcher is going to be better for you it's gonna be good for you so you want to make sure that you do, you, you do a thorough research so number three you look at neighbors what kind of neighbors do you have you look at what's the culture of the place that you are in you know do they have a whatsapp group are they a closed community you know is there a crime team that is going around and checking things out how are these people like would you cope you know would you cope staying with them would you cope with all the rules or things that are happening there, the cultures? Maybe there is noise, maybe you have fussy neighbors and all of that. Would you cope with all of that? Or even your tenants? You know, what is really happening there? Are there any issues maybe with the sewage or with the rubbish car? Is there anything that, you know, is a problem in that area? So basically, you want to look for advantages and advantages of the area and the people that are there, especially your neighbors. Number four, you want to look at credit score. I'm going to dive deep on the credit score as we go. But you want to look at the credit score. Most of the time, the banks want to look at the last 12 months, you know, of your financial records. That's the most important thing. And the credit record, you know, the credit score. You know, I spoke about this in one of the episodes. You may want to look at that in terms of how to improve your credit score. I have an episode just on improving a credit score number five you need to look at your budget what's the estimate how much do you want to pay for the house or for the flat do you want to pay a million rent a two million rent a three million rent or five hundred thousand up to you you need to know upfront and number two you need to know how much you can afford per month you know on installment even if it's a rental sometimes you may not find tenants sometimes they may not pay you but you still need to pay the bank so it must be something that you can afford number six you need a down payment of at least 10 percent to 20 percent depends on dynamics or what the you know the bank is saying number seven you need to be pre-approved we're going to talk about that as well but the two things that they look at when they're looking at pre-approval they look at your affordability and then of course they look at the credit score and then number eight you need to compare banks offerings so you might go to four banks five banks and then tell them that hey you want to buy that house how much would they give you at what percentage or at what rate interest rate then look at that you need to compare you need to be really good guys in terms of negotiating negotiation skills when you are buying houses when you are buying when you are, when you want to be in a property space I cannot overemphasize the importance of it. Number nine, you need to look at developing places. Places where there are more properties that are being developed. Maybe there are more, you know, stores, malls that are being built. More houses, more stuff that are going on there. New roads, great stuff. that are just developing in the area. The area is not deteriorating, but it's in a developmental stage even. Or it's well developed. 
so you want to look at all of those things they are very very important all right so now let's look at the bank requirements number one they're gonna need your id of course that's the first thing whichever country you're from you have an identity document number two a last pay slip so six months or a three months bank statement or even a 12 month bank statement that's what they might look at they want to check everything your expenditure you know your behavior and everything and number three they want to look at your expenses they will really dive deep in your expenses because what they really want to check is your affordability if you want to buy this house can you still afford you know the rates can you still afford your car your kids food other expenses that you have as a person your debit orders and whatnot so they want to just look at that to make sure that you have enough money so the affordability is very very important for the banks so they examine that actually on your bank statement and then if you are buying this in a joint maybe you are buying this with your spouse you are buying this maybe with your partner whoever they're gonna need exactly the same documents you know from them and then you know they compare the two sometimes it's a good advantage to join it sometimes it's not because the other person might you know uh, hinder the process in one way or the other so you know it's a give and take kind of a situation and then of course they also want a, a pre-qualification they want to make sure that you know you have already been you know off offered to that place we're going to talk more about that as we go now you are ready to buy a property where do you search for it these are the websites that you can use but there are so many there is a hundred of them out there but this is just a few lists that i know of number one we have lead home properties number two we have private property number three we have remax number four we have property 24 pam Golding property we have rosen property group we have harcourt or harcourt we also have property paradise all of these platforms are good property paradise is a new platform i've just met these guys you know in one of the conferences in sentin sun so you know they are really really good you can also check them out let's look at the mistakes that people make when they are buying properties this is where you need to focus on more number one they don't do enough research about everything that i've mentioned there either about the actual property to do a, a thorough in, inspection and investigation about the location you know about the rates maybe this property is owing maybe this property has issues maybe people are you know are fighting over it what is really happening they don't do a thorough research so that's the first mistake that people make number two overextending finances they overextend they keep on extending you know the finances number three neglecting home inspection this is what i was talking about they don't look at the crack they don't look at the plumbing they don't look at you know windows if they are working the doors the hinges the roof the ceiling uh, the geyser they don't look at that the tiles the floor they don't look at all of those things whether they are still in good shape and how how long has this building you know uh, uh, been there you know all of that is very important and people don't really do thorough research on that number four they ignore uh, the future sales of this property if you if you buy if you buy this property now and you want to sell it in five years or ten years would you get more money or would you get lesser money than what you paid you know this property for those are things that you need to look at so overall what do you look at there you look at the appreciating of the asset and of the area you know if the area attracts more people you know good things are happening in the area the, the you know the crime rate is very low you know things are developing the value might go higher but you know if things are going wrong there is traffic there is noise there is crime there's so many things that are going wrong it might go down so you might want to look at that can i still sell this house or i will make a loss you might need to look at all of that and then another thing that people neglect when they are getting properties is the neighbor considering your neighborhood you know what are the townships around you what are the suburbs around you what is really happening in those areas because what happens there uh, can directly or indirectly affect 
you know your area or your property and then you, they also ignore the hidden uh, costs when we talk about hidden costs i'm going to talk more about this but it's it, you know the tram transfer costs you know all those bonds registration and whatnot we're going to talk about that as we go but there are hidden costs that you need to know up front when you are you know buying a property there are lawyers that are involved here you need to go back and forth review a place go to an expert you know go to an agent this and that there's a lot that goes on you know in buying a property so you might need to consider uh, all of these things and their costs when you are when you are purchasing a property or when you are thinking at least about buy, buying a property another thing that people you know they are ignoring or they don't really look at they rush their decisions they visit one house or they inspect one house now they are attached they see themselves in that house they want to buy it same time they like it they see themselves their kids in that home they are rushing the process you must at least view three to five or ten houses before you make a decision you don't just check one house and then you good and then you go no you check a lot of houses you want to give yourself enough time to think you don't think on emotions but you use you know all the, the the facts that you found in each of these houses and then you know you consider everything that i've spoke about and then you make the right decision based on that you don't just look at the house that ah i love this house because of this and that what if the third or the fourth house is even greater than that one don't attach your emotions when you're buying a house and that's a lot of you know mistakes that we you know we find when people are buying houses another issues that people have they use emotions as i've said and another thing is they don't seek professional guidance so they don't talk to someone who knows more about houses about the roof about you know like inspection they don't talk to people who can be the second eye the third eye they just go and view and think they know everything maybe you don't know much about electricity and the electricity is bad maybe there's something wrong about the structure of the house you may not know those things you might even miss the cracks in the house you might miss few things you know the cupboards or whatever there, there might be problems in the house but if you are too glued in that house you might not see some of these things so you might want to make sure that you know you bring in an expert someone who knows more about houses then that person can help you even a friend if you don't want you know to pay money you can get a friend or two who can come with you or someone who has bought a house before who can help you you know to guide you in terms of what exactly do you need to do and then lastly i spoke about this uh, estimated needs future estimated needs what else is needed in this house there are things that you might not need now as you buy it but you might need to do it later on for instance renovations for instance there are structures that might have a problem in five or ten years are you prepared to change them at that time would you be in a good space and all of that there's so much that happens in the house once you occupy it so are you prepared for those things there are always constant cost in the house even insurance even you know improving uh, security and all of those costs are you prefer are you prepared of those of those things so the mistakes that people are making they don't look at those you know costs that might affect them going forward what is the process of viewing properties so let's go through everything that you need to know and prepare when you are going to go for the viewing of the properties number one of course you might have done your research do your research and do a selection so a selection you do it on your website you go through hundreds of properties you look at them you select them you look at them you select them you keep writing them down that is the first one the second one you schedule viewings so now you talk to the agent and say hey can i come and view the place there that's the second thing that you do that that thing you prepare questions you need to make sure that you have questions and you have checklist checklist of everything checklist of the, the, the security checklist of the, the the cost of you know the, the the rates of the house check everything the windows if they're fine the doors everything you keep on checking so you have a checklist you have questions that you're going to ask the the, the the person who's assisting you which is the agent most probably and then fourthly arrive prepared so you come you come there prepared maybe you dress comfortably because you might go around the house and maybe it's a big house 
or it's a big flat or whatever it, the case may be maybe it's development you know it's still in a very developmental area you still need to make sure that you wear comfortable because you might be walking around a lot you have a camera a phone to take pictures you has you also have a notepad where you write down stuff and you might need a measurement if you want to measure stuff if you know what you're doing of course and then another thing is you want to inspect the ex the exterior in the exterior you look at the roof you look at the windows you look at the parking you look at the space in the area you know you look at uh, so many things outside uh, that might affect you in the future or that are working in your advantage in the internal or exterior you look at you know plumbing you look at tiles you look at the floor you look at the cracks you look at the doors you look at tabs you look at electricity you look at outstanding bills if there are any you look at leaks you look at so many things the cleanness of the house as well it's very important to look at that it's very important two areas in the house that you need to really pay more time in or attention in it's the kitchen and the bathroom kitchen and the bathroom you need to make sure you spend more time there in the kitchen you want to look at the built-in cupboards you want to look at you know whether they are still in a good condition the water the geyser is working everything is fine there in the bathroom you also want to look at the same thing uh, the material that is there the bathtub maybe the shower the tabs the plumbing does it flush okay you know the hygiene you want to look at all of those things in these two places why because there's a lot of water that's where a lot of activities actually take place more than in the bedroom so yes you want to look at that assess the storage areas are they storage areas in the house are they good if you need a safety do they have a safety if they don't it's fine you know but look at the space how much space do you have you know if you want to add your own things if you want to do your own interior or you even want to bring someone you know can you still work around your own design can you still put your own you know a style or your own effort in changing the place and all of that so that will depend on the space of the property and how currently it is designed and can it change or it cannot be changed and you also want to evaluate uh, of course the amenities i've talked about that and the the utilities around the areas i spoke about the parks i spoke about the you know uh, the schools uh, all of these things malls and everything you, wanna, you may want to look at all of that it's very important and also you want to observe I've, i spoke about that again but i'm going to repeat it now because these are things that people miss when they are doing inspection you want to look at the neighbors you want to look at the noise level you want to look at the businesses around the area you want to look at the private tran the, the public transport you want to look at the schools the parks the stores the malls you know even government facilities if you may even where you work or where the prospective tenants might work you want to look at all of that the closer it is to the facilities the better please take a lot of pictures while you are doing the viewing and inspection take a lot of pictures of everything the internal the, the external take everything and please write down notes as much as possible lastly do a follow-up after that inspection maybe you want to follow up on some questions that you have you want to do more research about the area maybe now that you have spoken to the agent you want to go back now and do even a thorough research because you now compare what you known before and what you know now and then you know guys buying a property is a tedious process you really need to go through all of these things that i say that that i'm mentioning there the process of buying a house in terms of paperwork so number one it's the offer to purchase that you get from the seller number two it's bond registration you know from the bank side and then it's transfer costs from the seller side you know it also includes lawyers there there might be a lawyer from the bank a lawyer from the seller side uh, and also you know if the house is more than uh, one million you might need to pay transfer cost if it is less you don't have to and then after all that process um, you know once you guys have agreed and everything you need to register the property in the deeds office it needs to be registered now on your name and all of that and it is a process 
Uh, it might be done by your lawyer or you can work hand in hand with your lawyer. Depends on the arrangement or either the agent can do it on your behalf. But those are the process, you know, in terms of paperwork that goes on there. I might be leaving some of the things, but these are the most important things that happens. The transfer costs, the, the, they, they, they happen, especially if there was a tenant that was there before. So now there has to be a change of ownership. If it is a new property, then there might not be, you know, a new, new cost that are involved there. All right. So how to pay, how to pay your home loan fast, how to pay for your property as quick as possible. Number one, financial planning. I always talk about this. A budget is everything. Set a budget so that you know how much you can put more on this property. So that's number one, set up your budget. Number two, make extra payments. So if you are supposed to pay maybe 15,000 or 20,000, maybe you can pay 22 or you can pay 16, whatever that you can afford, but please pay more. Number three, don't pay monthly pay bi-weekly so pay every after two weeks or pay week on weekly basis you can split it that's how you can kill the interest and pay more of course and then number four if you have a lump sum if you have more money just put that money up front just put more money in that property in that way you can finish it off quickly because you know you put a huge amount up front Number five, you want to live a frugal life. You want to be stingy. You want to live a very, very minimal life because you want to take as all the money you have as possible and put it in this property. So it might take you time. It might, you know, require you to sacrifice a lot in your life, sacrifice friends, sacrifice vacation, sacrifice, you know, other things even for kids or for yourself that you love. But it is necessary if you want to finish it quickly. I know people who have paid for the houses, you know, in two years, in five years, where they were supposed to pay the house for 15 years, 20 years or 25 years or 30 years. But they pay them, you know, in five years, in 10 years instead of 30 years. So the way they do that is by paying more and sacrificing a lot, just redirecting all the money into the house. It does help guys because number one, it kills the interest rate. It kills the amount of money that you will pay over time. Remember guys, it, the interest rate fluctuates a lot. It normally increases. So if you pay as quick as possible, you might be lucky that you pay, you know, even lesser amount. And then you automate your payments please don't rely on you remembering to pay just automate them meaning you set up debit orders and then it debit it debits every month or every week it's up to you how you want to go about that and please track the progress check if you know the, the 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 actual payment is going down you see the reflection in your statement that it goes down it's very important sometimes you might think that you are paying but you are not really paying maybe some things are happening and the first thing that you really want to kill is the interest rate then you can also you know in yeah, kill the the principal amount or the the amount that you were given by the bank but please pay as fast as possible and lastly you might want to find another stream of income that will help you to pay for this house if it's a rental property it's even good because the tenants the money that you get from the tenants might pay for this property but if it's your own property if it's a private property you might make sure that you have enough money to pay and you have even another stream of income that is helping you to pay the website that you can look at if you want to apply for the bond number one it's better bond in south africa number two it's sa home loans number three all south african banks i believe they do offer or most of south african banks they do and in fact across the world across africa across the world you know all the banks they do offer home loans let's talk about the types of properties so number one we have residential properties which is the single home you know or single family homes number two it's apartments number three it's townhouses and then we have commercial properties that is office building number two retail spaces number three industrial properties number four hotels and hospitalities you know for food restaurants and everything and then we have investment properties which is rental properties of course and then we have vacation properties 
and then we have real estate investment trusts so that is investing in you know property that are there and then you invite shareholders to you know participate in these properties and then you know you divide the, 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 the profits in terms of dividends and all of that other properties is student accommodation you need to be next to the universities or colleges and lastly if you have back rooms you can also you know uh, rent those out back rooms i know maybe in some places they don't regulate you know uh, you to uh, rent uh, back rooms but some they do or you can find a way on how you can properly do you know back room rentals and all of that but it's something that is very very important to look at other website for hosting houses and all of that it's airbnb and booking.com especially for vacation homes or vacation places these two platforms or apps or website or companies they help a lot in terms of listing your property there it's airbnb and booking.com i know there's quite a lot out there but these are the most common ones that at least i'm familiar with or that i've used myself and then we want to also look at where to have your property where can you have your property number one in developing cities or developed cities but cities that are growing you know in terms of value that are not depreciating but growing very less crime and all of that no problems in terms of transport government water you know and all of that you want to look at that so developing cities busy suburbs good suburbs when i say busy where there is access but maybe quiet if you want a very quiet space where there is no noise not too many things you know you might also want to look at that and then number three you want to look at townships townships has a lot of money guys townships that's where the money is at and that's where a lot of people are at and they do need places if you think about places like soweto umlazi wamashu you know alex there is millions of people in those places and they change places and there are malls in the in, you know in those areas so townships have actually a lot of money and lastly in industrial areas around mining around you know places where there are industrials you might want to also have a property there all right so how to acquire a property number one you need a good credit score i i did talk about this in one of my episodes i spoke about uh, at least you need a good or very good or excellent credit score at least 680 to 850 680 and above that is really quite good you may negotiate anything other than that but that's where you know your credit score might be around and please double check this information by the way secondly uh, of course you need a deposit upfront of you know of 10 percent if your house is uh, you know 1 million you might need 100,000 upfront you know all of those things you might need to look at you need pre-qualification certificate sometimes that is optional not everyone needs it number four you need a home loan so you must have already gotten a home loan and then you need of course I spoke about the transfer cost the registration you know cost bond registration cost if you want to hire an agent to help you or other professionals those are other people that you might need to bring in and then once you have the properties what are the things that you also want to look at or you might need number one you need a furniture oh my goodness that's where you'll start spending a lot of money you might also need to decorate the house you know interior design that is you might also need a home insurance you might need to upgrade the security the fencing you know the gate uh, maybe you know the, the 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 detectors in the house whatever it may be the cameras and everything you want to upgrade that and you also want to look at the, the the electricity and the water bills because those are continuous things now that you need to pay for and you also want to pay for uh, you know there are things that are paid in other communities you know maybe you are paying for a security company that is checking the place around all the time you are paying for a governing body you know there are monies that are paid and all of that those are the things that you need to know 
and you need to also know about the sectional titles title deeds and all of that there are different type of deeds know and understand those type of deeds and lastly please make sure that you look at the final things in the house double check everything in the house if it's still less than a, a month or three months you can still go back to these people and be like hey these are your problems i might cut you down on certain prices or what what i might not pay for this and this and that and then you negotiate that so you might want to look at the house guys the thing that you need to do in the house is inspection more than anything worry about the inspection of course have money and a credit record once you have these things you are done you have the house so this is how you buy a house i know i may have le left out other things but the most important thing here is the tenants if you are going to rent out your property please make sure you do a thorough research you have the contract for your tenants you make sure that you explain everything up front and you make sure that you keep the deposit those are things that you need to make sure that you you know you lay out up front so that you don't suffer i always advise my mentees to hire an agent someone who will manage the property instead of them managing it themselves the reason why i say this is because managing a property comes with a lot it comes with you know other tenants complaining now you answer calls at night it comes with tenants not paying you on time you need now to follow up on them it comes with a lot of things you know things have broken they don't pay you need to vacate them you need now to go to the court and all of that and and apply for evacuation and all of that it's just a lot instead of finding someone who knows about property you know who will just do everything and then you pay them that monthly fee and then they manage your property if there is a rental property or either for vacation or you know it's a rental throughout the month or years so you might also want to look at that in the airbnb please make sure you list your property in the airbnb and you need a furniture up front you need the furniture and everything it needs to be there in the house and you need to list it in so many places and then do marketing if you want to do it for vacation you need marketing as thorough as possible and you need good pictures because you need to put them on different websites like gumtree job indeed you know uh, uh, accommodation.com and all of that so you want to look at all these different websites and then you are good to go but in terms of buying properties this is it guys as long as you know the hidden cost you have the money up front you understand all of these things that i said you are good to go you can buy a property all the best cheers i'll see you on the next episode here on the root of money please don't forget to subscribe and tell your friend about this very important podcast which is educating people about making money about investing and about understanding everything in the business and finance space thank you this is MCZ. Cheers. Bye-bye.